the area, if this is the time where the TI will help you, you know, give you some advice and if you, if you're having any troubles. Okay. Um, your official assessment will be April 17th through April 21st. Okay, so similar to your uh, tour assessment, it will be with TIs or ourselves. Uh, so this will be the full on everything, everything from the folder to your icebreaker that you include, everything. Um, okay, so this is really your time, you know, when I was in ambassador, it was my favorite because I could really interact with our students. Um, so just imagine how you would want to do that. How do you, how are you going to engage your students? Okay, so a lot of them are feeling nervous. Some of them are like over it, but like, you know, how are you going to deal with that? Um, so keep those uh, time frames in mind. Um, you will be signing up for both practice assessment um, no later than January 25th. Um, we actually want you to come up with your availability um, next week, right? So make sure that you know what times you are available um, next. So it's one of my favorite things, aside from academic advising, but I really enjoy it also. And I think that the TIs can vouch for, for this in terms of like, this is going to be the time, and we're going to go over the schedule as well, but this is really the time that you get to interact with students in a small group setting. Um, and it's also an opportunity for them to talk to a current student as well, and not be with other 500 students or be with their parents at the welcome. Um, so students really enjoy it, and um, you, I think you also will too. So. Um, it's a great part of our of our program uh, orientation day. Again, it's information you know, it's nothing new, so it shouldn't be a big deal. It's just a matter of you delivering all of that good stuff in your practice. And for if you turn to page four, it gives you a week by week of what's going to be happening uh, each training session. Uh, so a couple things that I just wanted to point out is. Um, our first session of academic advising is going to be on the 1st. So February 1st, um, Heather will be in here and she'll start um, training for that. And then your first quiz is going to be on February 8th. Uh, so that'll be the first time that you're assessed on um, the catalog and general catalog in terms. So it'll be uh, whatever that was covered on the week before will be what your quiz on the following. Um, and then we'll have a little bit of a break from advising uh, the first week or the second week of March. So it's March 8th. And this will be another opportunity for, for all of us to kind of just check in and see how you're doing with your small group presentation. And we'll give you more details as to what that, what that is going to look like. Um, and your TIs will also be there to assist um, in that practice. And then spring break will be the week of March 29th. So that last week into the first week of April. And then we resume with academic advising um, on the 5th. So it'll be that Wednesday following spring break. And this will be the opportunity for you all to once again review. Um, Heather does a really good job with the review session, so uh, you're well prepared to take the final uh, that next week on the 12th. And as Denise mentioned, the week of the 19th, or April 17th, um, you'll be doing your small group presentation. Uh, with either TI or Denise and myself. On the 26th will be a review of the uh, final exam, and then on the 3rd will be a final training wrap-up. Okay? That'll, that'll be uh, the end of training. Any questions? Any questions? You also uh, received, you all handed up this out as well, right? Um, no, we just handed up this Okay. Which one? The one pager that Heather gave oh, us. Yeah. <coughs> your binder, yeah. 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 So you want to bring your um, training binder each and every week. Gabrielle. Um, do we have to keep everything that you guys gave us from last semester, or should we just? Yeah, I would keep it because you're going to continue to use it. Okay. Um, there's probably some information on there that you'll want to reference either for your small group presentation uh, and then for the orientation in general. Okay. Yeah. I still have mine from my rookie binder. Yeah, I was going to say. My rookie binder's in my office. I'm sure to see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I pull it out every once in a while. No, we Everything. still like go back yeah. to your training and see like what did we do for this? Yeah. How have things changed? So it's a good reference point. Uh, so just wanted to also give you this. This was something that Heather created, and it's more specific to just a week by.
by week uh, for the academic, academic advising portion. So um, that's also for your reference. We won't go into detail, but if you ever need to contact her, uh, she will also have her um, information on here. Any other? Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry, one more question. So for training materials, it says personal information sheet, degree evaluation map. Um, so do we have to print that out off of our web portal and bring it to the screen here? Or? So those are one of some of the materials that Heather's going to bring okay. to you all. So she'll have everything, essentially, that you'll need. Okay. Um, if we do need you to bring something, we'll let you know. But all that will be provided to you. Okay. And you can just keep it in your training binder. Um, so you'll see in your tabs there's a, a section for advising. Um, so you can just keep it all in there. And we'll do the best um, to get everything open for you all as well. So I know that makes it easy. So, any other questions? So we wanted to go over just a general uh, general overview of what the ambassador schedule looks like. Uh, not ambassador schedule, orientation. Uh, looks like so you kind of get a glimpse to what the day looks like. Um, yeah, you can you can hand that out. Thank you. Um, because you know, as we mentioned, we want you to start getting into that mindset of orientation. And I know it's January, and um, orientation doesn't begin until July, uh, but it'll get here soon. And we just want you to start thinking, uh, like, what are some of the things that you know a student is going to be asking you. What are things that you're going to need to know um, so you're, you're well prepared for following your future? So the TIs are passing out right now a um, schedule of the day. Uh, some of the things that we're going to review are on here, but other things are not. Um, and that's, that's fine. It was assigned to be that way. So I mentioned earlier at the beginning that there's a, a training that we all do with everybody. So it's rookies, experience. And it's usually, I would say, probably the week that we start orientation. Orientation usually starts the second week of, of July. So, um, for example, last year we had orienta orientation training for ambassadors that Monday and Tuesday. I think it was the 10th and 11th. And we started orientation, I believe, on the 15th or so. Um, so it gives you, if it's two full days of training, um, experience, as I said, join us. So it's all the ambassadors and we have presenters and give you updates so um, everyone is ready to go for um, our first day of orientation. Uh, so we'll go into a lot more specifics during that training, uh, so we won't go into the, um, a lot of detail, but we just wanted to make sure that you kind of start, um, you know, grasping what the day is going to look like. So each day of orientation, uh, we start off um, with a morning meeting. Um, usually the morning meeting starts at 6.55, 6.50 and we meet in Montezuma Hall. That's where we do our um, welcome session. Uh, so that's, and even before that, um, ambassadors, uh, you know, part of the, the compensation that we give them uh, to work orientation and long days is um, ambassadors get a uh, ASIC shops voucher. And some of them um, used to choose it in um, Starbucks. Um, so that's really awesome that, you know, we provide you all as a thank you for each day for waking up super early and uh, working with us during the summer. Um, so, you know, some folks decide that they want to come in a little early and get their Starbucks, but everyone has to be in a Montezuma Hall by the time that we say. So, especially the first couple of days, this is our time to talk about any updates that might, that you all might need to know. So if there was a, an office hours change or a location change or anything like that, because uh, students and parents are going to be asking you all um, you know, where is this? Or what time, what are the hours for this office? So, uh, you know, that's usually when we give those updates. Uh, we also hand out your different assignments for the day, and it's just a kind of a catch-all for us to regroup each morning um, and let you all know uh, what's going to happen or, and um, kind of get us started for the day. Um, and then after that, you go to your morning assignments. Some of you help out with check-in. Some of you are greeting. Um, some of you will be our um, human easels, as we like to call them, who are the ambassadors who are holding the signs um, inside Montezuma, and they leave the college um, around each uh, to each of the locations. Um, so that's kind of the morning. 
and then I, um, I'll hand it over to, to Eunice to talk about check-in. Mm -hmm. All right, so check-in. Some of you might remember that Stephanie did, you know, you get asked, what is your red ID number? Um, and yes, a lot of students will know that, they'll have their confirmation ready, um, or parents will do that for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a time where they receive all of their material. Um, so we are very, very high-tech office, as you all know. So we do use our iPads to check in students. So everything is live. Um, when a student checks in, then we know obviously that they're here and that they will have the capability to register for classes that afternoon. If they don't show up, we don't check them and they won't be able to register for classes. Um, but it's really cool that we are able to do that. Um, We'll take care of them, make sure that they get their catalog, their personalized uh, folder, that they get their student folder in, in their bag, their backpack that they get, um, and that the parents receive their parent folders as well if they're there. Um, so this is your time, those of you who are doing check-in, to be welcoming. I always go around to each table and say, let me see your smiles. I literally will say that to you. Um, and I want you to show me the pearly whites. Um, so, you know, because you're the first face that they're seeing. Um, so you want to be welcoming and, you know, just you want to set off the tones, you know, good. Because it is a long day. You all know that. It is a long day. Some of them are very scared um, or anxious, stressed. So you want to do as much as you can to ease it. And, uh, you know, that's the perfect time to, to welcome them. Um, and then after that, they'll go up to Montezuma Hall for the first um, session, which is a welcome. Yep. So, um... We have the welcome session, and for this session, it's both parents and students together. For our orientation programs, we have parents and families, um, guests, uh, together with the students. Uh, for transfers, there's a couple of transfer orientations that we have parent programs, um, guest programs, and then there's some that only have student programs. So there's a, a differentiation there. Um, so during the welcome session, uh, it's typically Michelle who welcomes the students and she serves kind of as the kind of the like the host of the welcome session, and then she introduces uh, one of our associate vice presidents or vice presidents of student affairs, and sometimes we also have the president there um, of the university. So she'll introduce them, they'll give you know a speech, and then she introduces our associated students president who is also there during every welcome session to welcome, obviously, the students to San Diego State. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then we kind of review the schedule with them, let them know where they're going to be going, and then we split off. You know, we split off the students. Um, typically, the students are the ones that are moving, and then the parents and the guests stay inside Montezuma Hall. That's where the majority of their program um, is at. So um, that's when the human easels are really important. Um, and taking the, the students. Um, last year we were in Arts and Letters, uh, so we had to take all of our students each day to Arts and Letters. Other years we've been in ENS 280, uh, and that's where the next session happens. I'd like to also add to the welcome that ambassadors get to do the college cheers. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, your ambassador probably led a cheer. Um, and see Natalie Coffee. <laughs> Same one. Um, so it gets very competitive, and this goes way back tradition. Um, you know, so if you're like college of sciences, ooh, that's me. Um, you know, you you want to win, so you want to come up with the most creative. Um, you can reuse old ones; it doesn't matter. It's just for fun. Um, but ambassadors really enjoy that, and it does get competitive. So something for you all to look forward to. If you want to start creating little jingles, hey, go for it. Um, I won't tell the experience. Um, and then you remind me also the fight song. We also do the fight song right after that, and usually one of the ambassadors leads us in the, uh, the fight song. So it's really fun. Um, students and parents really get into it in the morning, some more than others, but um, it's also a way for them to kind of start off their day and know that there's a lot of acid spirit here on campus. So um, that's why you all need to know the fight song for orientation. Um, so as Frankie mentioned, we do split off parents and students at one point, if you all remember. Um, students will go to the success at SDSU, and this presentation has really uh, changed throughout the past few years, just because they, there are certain things that the university wants to make sure that our first year students are aware of, you know, policies, um, specifically about sexual assault. Um, so there's been a lot of training. Um, maybe some of you remember the Let's Talk campaign. That's something that is talked about to the students and why it's important, what they can do to prevent or to help, um, what are their options if they are a victim or if they know someone. 